And he loves spreading his love through music. So y'all keep it going, Mr. Gerald Dean. Thank you, brother. Jarrell <laughs> Dean, y'all. I'm gonna talk. Jarrell Dean. Keep it going. Keep it going, Jarrell. Uh, before I sing, I want to say to the young people to make sure that, that you do not let anyone despise your youth. Stand strong in what you believe and stand for something. Because only what you do for him truly will last. So keep your faith up and stay prayed up, and he will keep you. Yes, he will. That's right. Yes, he will. That's right.
y'all. October the 17th. We need to be in numbers. Numbers. Tell all of your friends, co-workers, Ladies first. Hi everyone. I'm Shreve McFadden. I'm here from Charlotte, North Carolina, but I am a native of South Carolina. Um, currently, I have a nonprofit organization which is called Three Love Incorporated. We're basically we're going around doing team summits. We're trying to dedicate young people to have an interest in having healthy relationships, meaning lack of domestic violence. Um, Increasing rape and different things like that that go along, decreasing disease and disability. Also, we are trying to offer um, counseling services at a lower rate um, for people in the community. I am a counselor. Uh, we're doing groups on health relationships, anger management, and also on parenting. I also have written a book, so a lot of people take interest in that. Another thing I like, I always like to tell people is to just Find who, what your full potential is. Everybody has their, their potential. So don't let anybody tell you or nobody and that you can't do anything in this world, okay? All right, now. All right, all right. I'll go next. <laughs> so my name is Mike Singleton. Hey, Ruben. <laughs> Tell them who you are, Mike. Tell them who you are, brother. Uh, no uh, Ruben has known me since I was a teenager. So she's probably hadn't seen me, you know, as a young man. So she can, you know, she's probably surprised some of the things I've done since she's, you know, elderly. Come to house, Well, my name is Mike Singleton. A lot of people know my cousin John Singleton. That did nothing for me though, <laughs> you know, coming into the film industry. Uh, John's philosophy is God bless the child, he's got his own. Yes, so, you know, I come from a city, New uh, Grable, area called Nickeltown. Nothing good is supposed to come out of Nickeltown. But I know the greatness that has come, that had come before me. We produce senators, lawyers, I mean, you name it. So, I'm the youngest of five children, family of seven, and I have some great role models. Ruby was one of them. My sisters were you know, three great role models. My, my next to oldest sister, she's the first African-American queen at Jail Man High School. So she made history for the family and that elevated our mentality. But I'm telling you that to say this. People will tell you you're nothing, you can't do anything with your life, but it's like she said, you can do whatever you wanna do. Coming from Nickeltown, I graduated college cum laude. I didn't even know what that meant. When they gave it to me, I didn't even, I was walking across the stage like, what is this? But they, they wanted to surprise me. But what happens is, you your dreams will take you further than you even think they can take you. I never thought that I would go to a foreign country. I really didn't. Well, the first movie I worked on, one of the guys invited me to go to Asia with them. I'm like, what, Asia? Like, you know, what? I never thought about it, but I invested in a passport. Michaela, Michaela, Ayla, I wish she was still here because when she talked about investing in a passport, trust me, it'll happen for you faster than you think, especially in this, this world with you guys, the internet and the global economy. So I ended up going to Asia a couple times, <laughs> spending a lot of time. When you think you're going for a week, you know, they invite you to stay a little bit longer and God blesses you to say, okay, I can stay, you know, I can afford to stay a bit longer. But coming from Nickeltown, I want you to, you guys to remember this. They don't think that some good can come out of a lot of people and greatness is actually what's in you. You know, Tavis Smiley, how many of y'all familiar with Tavis Smiley, young people? Yes. Tavis has the same story. You, you imagine that great people have the same story. Your story is your story. You're just young right now. You haven't written it yet. These people have a similar story. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to a young man that I met who is great. And I've met probably every celebrity that you wanna name, I met him. So I'm not even gonna go into that part because I thought that was the greatness that was gonna come out of my film career. 
But trust me, people like the guy that just sang and that local talent, I put him in a film before I, you know, go after probably your favorite celebrity. Because I know he has a great story to write, and I want to be a part of that from the ground level. So I'm going to introduce you to the great Chris Duncan. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. My name is Christopher Duncan. I'm originally from Jamaica. Is anyone here familiar with Jamaica? Been to Jamaica? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my story is um, also um, um, an author. I wrote a new book. It's called um, Mind Shift, Your Attitude is Your Wealth. And the reason why I wrote this book is basically is the way I was raised in Jamaica and the way I see the struggle and how people struggle in life to make it. So what this book basically talking about is in order to have something in life, it's not here. You have to have a mind shift to break you because everything in life manifests itself on the inside of which is the mind. So my book basically it teaches you how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And also for the kids, I want the kids to know that um, you got greatness in you. Don't let no one tell you you can't do nothing. That's right! That's right! And one of the most important things you got to do first, you got to look within yourself. Stop looking at the outside world and let television tell you how to live your life and who you need to be. Because remember, you came in this world by yourself, and you are different. You're like no one else. Because you got talent here today that I don't possess. I got talent you don't possess. So you just got to find out who you are and start working the talent. And let God be your guide. Let God be your guide. Everything will come from him through you. But you got to be connected to him to let it flow through you. That's right. And I always said, you know, you were spiritual being of the human experience. Because first, you are a spirit. So, you know, just know that you have greatness in you and keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, brother. How's everybody doing? All right. Good, good. All right. My name is Andre McCullough. I am the director for the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition. That is a program that is designed to help fathers, families, get back to their children. And we do that through education, employment, and working hand in hand with families. We want to empower, to encourage, and to show dads, in spite of the circumstances, that they can make a difference. We have an awesome relationship with the Child Support Enforcement Division, PDSS. We work with economic stability, healthy relationship with parents. Not only that, but we have a component that's called spiritual development. We feel like that if we can change the heart, then we can change the behavior. And my testimony, originally from uh, New York, and I grew up in uh, poverty in many areas of my life. And um, hopefully you'll, get to, you'll hear from my brother in a minute. But um, one of the things that I understand in concept about storms, about trials and tribulations, I'm understanding from a biblical principles is kind of joy. I didn't understand that why can you count of joy when you're in a storm when you're hurting and you're going through adversities and sometimes you feel like your life doesn't seem to pan out. But the good news is that storm produces growth. It builds character. One of the words that I've learned in college was resilience or resiliency, which means that you never give up in the midst of your storm. My question to you, how bad do you want success? What does success mean to you? Do you want that job, the nice home, to be able to provide for your family one day? that you want all the things that you want out of life, but you have to succeed. Succeed means never give up. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Javon Cash. I'm here, uh, Jamie asked me to come and just basically give me a testimony. Janae. Janae. asked me to come and just basically give my testimony. Uh, from the west side of Spartanburg. Uh, no, nothing special about me, no more, no less, but uh, I've learned through life that life itself is a lot of trials, a lot of errors, but the thing that you got to understand is that you got to keep trying, you got to keep motivating yourself. You can look to others, but it really comes from you. And my testimony comes from May 23rd, 1993. Uh, I was with a group of friends, and we were doing things that were counterproductive, basically to public society, we'll say it like that. But uh, but basically, 
basically it was just to the point where it was an altercation where I actually was shot. And close range, back of the head. Still got the bullet 38. Still with me to this day. I went through a little bit of rehab. Four days I was in the hospital, two days I was blind. And that actually changed my whole mentality as far as how you look at things, how you see things, how you judge things. Not that it had to be, but that it was what it was, and that the whole time God was there with me. He, actually he made me understand and basically start seeing things from a different perspective, because to the best of my knowledge and what doctors were telling me, I had lost my sight. And that's a humbling, that's really, really, really a humbling thing. You gotta think about, okay, you'll never see the sunshine. You'll never see your mother again. You'll never see your friends again. You'll never see any of the things that you remember. They're all gone. But, grace of God, two days later, my sight was returned. Ooh, and in five days, I went from being in the hospital to being back out. And no, no repercussions, obvious repercussions, to say anything about it. You know, I was back in doing things that, that back to my life. But what I did not do was go back to the life that I was in before. Amen. I took, I tried to take most of those tools that I had learned from whether they were the hard knock perspective and or scholastic perspective, because the other side of it was, I, in 1991, I went to Tuskegee. My first year was on a full academic scholarship to be pre-made. That was before I got shot. Once I got shot, I basically had to reinvent myself. And in my reinvention, I found that the tools that I had, had learned and the things that I had before, whether it was however they came, were tools that could be changed and or used to the bottom. And being independent, and yes, I have a father. My mother and my father came from a two, a two family, uh, family. I had both of my parents there. They were married 25 years and everything else, but that was not the choice that I took. That was not so much of a mistake because being independent is just that. You can come from a good background, a bad background, any background you choose. But it's those choices that you choose to make in life that will define you. It's not the game for you. You can change that and make it into something that is possible. And currently, I work for General Electric right now in the inventory logistics. I do international customs and translations basically for all of their freight that goes international through Asia, Europe, and all that. And that came from me reinventing myself, me taking the tools that I had learned and utilizing them for somewhat of a positive means, money. Money is a universal language. Money runs and rules anything that's around you. Once you learn how it can be, then you learn what it is to be. That being said, all I want to leave and impart with you is the fact that no matter what choice you make, no matter where you come from, no matter your upbringing, no matter you come from a single family home, or both of your parents, whether they're here or they're not here, the choices that you make are all judged on unto you. You can do and you can see what, what other people do, but ultimately it relies in you. You can look at other people, you can see what they do, but at the same time, you have to judge the people that are around you as one of two things. They're either going to bring you up by challenging you, by motivating you, by making you want to do better or see things different, or they're either going to do the other, which is to bring you down. That's right. That's right, brother. That's right. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you brother. Good evening. What's up, brother? Yeah, I'm, I'm Minister. Minister Raymond Foster. A lot of the guys, or uh, some people that grew up with me, they knew me from the Zodiac. Um, being like we had one of the best dance groups in the area. That's right. I mean, we was the baddest right. dance group you ever want to see. What? Oh, she's taking pictures. And, uh, but see, I grew up, um, what they call it, uh, Fair, Fair Forest Creek, but we call it Holiday Homes. I grew up in Holiday Homes from there to Holiday. So I'm always, always been a part of well, you know, people talk about how bad Holiday was and, you know, growing up, like like some of the gentlemen, like I said, I grew up with one parent. And um, my mom, she raised me the best way she could. 
you see, a lot of us, you know, we don't thank our parents for what they go through from day to day. You know, we, we, we tend to take our parents for granted. See, they got this law now, you touch your child and whatnot, you go to jail, but the Bible says, spread it all. So our kids are now run them up, they doing whatever they want to do. See, I'm so thankful that my mom beat, she beat the brakes off me. I mean, she really beat the brakes off me because I used to steal, I used to do all kind of little things that, you know, that kids shouldn't be doing, but I did it. I did it. And when I grew up, you know, I got older, like I said, I got into more, like I said, it's like a pattern. If you start doing things, and then like I always say, the people that you hang around, if you hang around people that, that like to fight, guess what? You won't fight. That's right. That's right. You hang around people that like to steal, guess what? Sooner or later, you're going to steal. That's right. I mean, the thing is that when my life got turned around, but more so when um, I left South Carolina. Um, I left South Carolina, I was debt free. I don't know if anybody know how that feel to be debt free. You don't owe nobody nothing. Everything you make is profit. You know, and um, got married. Now, I'm gonna tell you, a lot of us, we don't wanna pick up this right here and read it, study it. Cause the Bible says we gotta read this to show ourselves approved. We gotta study to show ourselves approved. And the Bible basically stands for basic information before leaving earth. So. Basically, it's a lot of things I didn't understand about myself. You know, you know, you're thinking that you can go into a relationship and you can change that person or you can meet, you can be what that person wants you to be. But then you don't even know yourself. So I've done that. I, you know, got married, got into it, you know, thinking everything's everything. But see, God was already showing me at the time. He said, not right now. I want you married, but not right now. See, a lot of us, we want to jump into stuff, you know, because of how good he looks or how good she looks. Oh, she got a banging body or, you know, he got this or he got that. But we got to stop looking at the shape of a person, but look at the shape they're in. You got to stop looking at the shape of a person, but look at the shape that they're in. Because that person that may look good, you don't know what's going on in your head. My wife, like I said, we talk. <laughs> but, you know, it was some things going on there. So we got into the marriage and everything, and uh, a few months into the marriage, she decided she didn't want to be married anymore. Now, I, I don't went out my way and put us in a big four-bedroom house, you know, big house, the whole nine, you know, going through all this debt. And uh, then go from, how can you go from being debt-free to being homeless? How can you go from being debt free? You don't owe nobody nothing but being homeless. The crazy part about it is that believing in God and what God said, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because during that process that I went through, that I lost my house, I gave it up and everything, we were staying in a hotel. But see, God gave me an apartment and a house. And then in the process, you know, going through all of that, I find out I got cancer.